humans will occasionally attempt to eradicate what they've been regarding as pests, either by directly killing the pests themselves, or by introducing a new predator to kill the pests. However, we've often underestimated how complex all the interactions of plants and animals are in an ecosystem, sometimes with fairly disastrous consequences. The species that are involved can be anything from the Eurasian tree sparrow to the cane toad. An example of the Eurasian tree sparrow was part of the Chinese government's four pests campaign, starting in the late 1950s. The sparrow was considered a major pest as it ate the grain seeds, and therefore had an impact on the amount of food that could be grown in the Chinese economy. The Chinese government then encouraged people to destroy the sparrow's nests, or to chase the sparrows into which died of exhaustion, or alternatively just shoot the sparrows. This of course had a dramatic effect on the sparrow population. Unfortunately, the Chinese government realised a little bit too late that as well as eating the grain seeds, the sparrows also ate a large amount of insects. With a massive decline in the number of sparrows, insects flourished, and especially locusts. This increase in insects had a dramatic impact on the amount of food that could be grown, and even though the Chinese government stopped the attacks on the sparrows, by then the numbers had declined to such a degree that insects contributed significantly to the following Great Chinese famine, resulting in the deaths of at least 15 million people. Over in Australia, a slightly different problem. The northern part of Australia started to grow significant amounts of sugarcane. The sugarcane was being attacked by a few scarab beetle species, most notably the grey backed cane beetle and the Frenchy beetle. Now, the adults would eat the leaves at the top of the plant, and the larva would attack the roots. And they could be controlled by using some rather strong pesticides. These were both expensive and also killed a great many other things beside the targeted species. They turned and introduced a predator to control the beetles. The animal they chose was the cane toad, which was introduced to Australia in 1935 and soon began to breed rapidly. Unfortunately, the cane toad has difficulty climbing the sugar cane stalks. It doesn't generally prey upon the adult beetles eating the, leaf, uh, eating the leaves at the top of the sugar cane that was supposed to be controlling. However, it went a little bit further than that. See, cane toads are also poisonous. With the cane toads not being indigenous to Australia, the native species has no resistance to the toxin, or even has a natural predation technique where they'd be able to avoid the poison. This has resulted in a number of native species suffering significant decline as a result. Also, since cane toads have no natural predators, their numbers have expanded rapidly, as has the area they inhabit. They can outcompete many other animals, like lizards, again dramatically altering their numbers and the ecological balance as a whole in Australia. These two examples show that we have to be very careful of the ecological system, and whether it's the gypsy moths in USA, the zebra mussels in the Great Lakes, or even the grey squirrel in Europe, altering the ecological balance can have fairly widespread results beyond what we might actually first expect. So have to be careful in introducing new species or altering existing species.